Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a very important DAX concept called filter context. Now, if you've read a few blog posts or maybe watched a few videos, and if you've come across the term called filter context, and perhaps never really understood what it is and how it works, this is the video that you would want to watch until the end. And also, in Power BI, you would be able to do a lot of stuff like create charts and drag and drop calculations, but you would not be able to build any sophisticated calculation unless you deeply understand what filter context is and how it actually works. Now let's just start with a very simple definition of filter context. Filter context actually means the filters which are applied to your data before any calculation happens. I'll repeat it once again. Filter context is nothing but the set of filters which are applied to your data before any calculations happens on the data. That's the meaning of filter context. The problem is that this filter context is not really visible happening on the screen. I mean, you can't really see the filters being applied to the data on the screen itself, like you would see that in Excel. Now in Power BI, all of this filter context happens under the hood. That means you will not be able to see anywhere the filters being applied to your data and then the calculations happening. Now, because it happens under the hood and you're not able to see it, that's what makes it slightly tricky to understand, but also the advantage is it makes it incredibly fast. Let's just take a look at a few examples of how filter context works and how can you actually make use of that. All right, let's just take a look at the data and then take a look at a couple of examples. In terms of data, I have the sales table, the products table and the calendar table. But for now, we're just focusing on the sales table. We have pretty standard columns in the sales table, the product key, the product code, the order date, when the product was ordered, the order number, the quantity and the price when multiplied gives me the sales amount. We have the customer ID or the customer key. We have a low priority or a high priority order and we have the source. That means whether you got the sale from a reference, from a walk-in or the online source. Now that's the data. We have also created a very simple calculation here, which is total sales. Total sales is nothing but the total of the amount column in the sales table. If you wanna take a look at that, I can real quick show you that. And that's the total sales calculation or the measure that I have created, sales amount being totaled up. Now, what I've done is I've created a very simple pivot table that I'd like to show to you. Now, in this pivot table, I have dragged the order priority high or low and the total sales calculation, which I just showed you, has been dragged against in the values. Now, I'd like to maybe talk about the three-step DAX calculation process. And when you understand the three-step DAX calculation process, you will automatically understand that how filter context is playing a vital role in that. Now, whenever you write a DAX calculation or a DAX measure, every measure is being evaluated in three critical steps. Step number one is that the filter context which are the filters that are applied to the data before the calculation happens are actually applied to the data. That's the first step. So in the first step, the filters are applied to the data. In the second step, on the filtered data, whatever calculation you have written, the formula that you have written, gets evaluated only on the filtered data. And finally, whatever result the calculation delivers is, is kind of delivered back to the visual. Let's just take a look at this total sales measure. And hopefully, since this is a very simple example here, you'll understand it. So if I just maybe talk about this number 250, six, this number has got a filter as order priority high. So in the brain of DAX, what is going to happen is that it will go to the sales table because that's the base table on which we are doing the calculation. And on that base table, it will apply a filter order priority equals to high. So practically this will happen in the mind of Power BI. So I'm in the Excel file, which is where the source data is kept. Although I will try to show you what happens, but all of that that I'm trying to show you now happens in the mind of Power BI. This is just an example. So the first thing that is going to happen is that that order priority high as a filter is applied on the data. And you can see that I have applied that filter order priority is high. That is nothing but the filter context. The filters uh, have been taken from the pivot table that we created and have been applied to the source data. Now, once the data has become shorter or filtered on the filtered data, the calculation starts to happen. And if you remember the calculation that I wrote for total sales was nothing but the sales amount total. And if I just kind of drag this entire column and see what the total of this column is, this is nothing but two. 256 and that's the total that we actually took a look at. Now once the calculation delivers the result 256, the final or the third step is that that number which is 256 is then carried back to the pivot table and you start to see that number right here. So those are the three steps in which the calculation happens in Power BI and the first step of that calculation is nothing but the filters being applied to the source data and that is nothing but the filter context. Now these three steps that I've just spoken about will happen individually for all the values that you see in the pivot 
pivot table. So as of now, I can see three values in the pivot table. The first value has the filter context order priority high. The second value has the filter context order priority low. That means the second filter. And the final one has no filter context. That means this calculation of totaling up the sales amount column will happen on the entire data. Let's just modify the pivot table a little bit and maybe you'll understand it better. So from my sales table, I am also going to get my source. So I'm just going to drag that right here in my pivot table and the source comes up right here. Now, if you take a look at this entire matrix or this entire pivot table, there are a lot of numbers here. And for each and every single number, the three step process happens every single time. Although it might seem a lot of work, but DAX is incredibly fast with that. So let's just take a look at me perhaps this number 256, the same number because there is just one filter context order priority high and that's the total of that. But if you come inside of the matrix, there are two filter contexts applied order priority high and uh, uh, the source equals to reference. So if I actually go back to my Excel and I apply another filter source equals to reference and then I perhaps total the amount column, I'm going to get the same answer as 156, which is what I also saw in the pivot table. So the first step is the filters are carried from the pivot table or whatever the visual you have. They apply on the source data. The data gets shorter on the shortened data. The calculation happens. The result is then returned back to the pivot table. All right, let's just take a look at another interesting example and hopefully you will understand filter context better. So I will just remove my total sales from here and drag my unique orders in my pivot table. If you want to take a look at what unique order calculation is, it's nothing but the distinct count of the order number, which is there in my sales table. And if you take a look at the numbers here, 5,000 was the unique orders, which were high and online and high and reference was about 20,000 and high and walk-in was about 11,000. Certainly if you total all of these unique orders up and expect the total should match, it would not match because here the filter context is order priority only as high. And what this is actually doing is it's actually applying a single filter here. That means it's only applying a single filter at order priority high and then going up to the order number and then removing all the duplicates and just giving me a single count. Now there could have been orders which were duplicated between the source as well. That means the same order number is in online as well, in reference as well, and in walk-in as well. That got removed at the total level. The point that I was trying to make was that each and every single number that you see has the three-step tax calculation process run over and over and over again for every single calculation here. All right, let's just try to build our understanding further by taking a look at how filter contexts actually work when you have a relationship established between two or more tables. So in terms of the data model, I told that we have multiple tables. We have the product sales and the calendar table, especially the sales and the products table are linked between the product key of the two columns. It's a one to many simple relationship. And let's just take a look at the different columns that we have in the products table. So in the products table, we have the product column, the category column, the product key column, the colored model name and the subcategory column. Simple, nothing complicated. Here I have created another visual. Now in the visual, one of the columns is coming from the sales table, which is nothing but the order priority. But the other column is actually coming from the products table, which is the product category. And you can see that my total sales is filtered, which simply means that if you draw any particular column from the one side of the relationship that will be able to filter the many side of the relationship. Now, you must be wondering that because there is a relationship established, so this number is correct, which is absolutely correct. But I actually want to show you that how exactly is this number arrived using the three step filter context or the tax calculation process. Now, step number one is if you remember the filter context is being picked up from the visual and that gets applied to the source data. Now, in terms of this data, the source data is the sales data and there are two filter contexts against 612. The first filter context is order priority high. What's going to happen is that on my sales table, the order priority high filter is going to be applied. That's the first filter that get, gets applied even before the calculation happens. The second filter was category as accessory, but we don't have the category column anywhere to apply. So what happens is that the filter is still applied to the products table, which is right here, X category column, and uh, the filter gets applied accessory. And we have only those product keys left which belong to the category of accessories. Now, because there is a relationship established, all of these product keys will travel through the relationship and will then filter the product key column of the sales table. And in the sales table, along with the high filter that we have just applied, you will also have all of the product keys that belong to the accessory category. Once that filter is applied and the data is shortened, you're going to perform the sum calculation on the sales amount and that sum is going to be returned here. So the filter actually applies to the product, but then it travels through that relationship over here. 
All right, that was a short description about how filter context works uh, between the tables and on a single table. And especially if you're coming from an Excel background and trying to learn Power BI and DAX, there are no cell references in Power BI. You don't get to write A1 to B10, B1 to B10 and things like that. Everything in here actually works based on filtering and filter context. So that's the thing that you actually would want to master because you would not be able to write any sophisticated calculations or you would not be able to debug any calculations unless you understand filter context really, really well. Another very important concept in DAX is a row context. And I certainly cannot cover that in this video. And that certainly deserves a full video of its own. And probably I'll cover that later. Now, if you would like to learn DAX right from scratch and start to build calculations and understand a whole lot of complexities that are there in row context, filter context, and then come up to a level where you start solving more practical and your own business problems, I highly suggest that you take a look at my course on DAX, which is where I talk about row context, filter context, calculations, practical cases, and a whole lot of stuff. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be very happy to help. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.